after analyzing as much as I can. I could be wrong, but I do believe that Kamala Harris is best for the American empire as a whole. Uh, Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party as a whole, it, they have their ideology, which is to expand American imperialism as much as possible. Uh, Trump, for an example, uh, he has no ideology. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't even know where how to put this. Like, he, he's just there. He's running just to be president. I don't think he really cares about the American empire. I mean, he has his money. I don't think he cares. Kamala, Kamala Harris, for an example, she she has multiple plans for imperialism, exploitation, expansionism. Uh, take the state of Israel, Ukraine, uh, the Republic of China, Taiwan. I mean, take all those things. Trump is literally going to isolate the U.S. and probably just I mean, just just isolate it in general. We're, we're going back. He's going to, like, isolate the United States. And it's going to lose, like, imperial control over the world. So, like, I'd say... Let, let's just say I was an American patriot, for an example. Let's just say I'm a, I was an American nationalist. Um, I would, I would vote Kamala Harris. Even if I was, like, culturally right-wing, for an example. I'd probably... Hopefully, wouldn't be that dumb. I would still vote Harris. Simply because Harris has a plan. I mean, let's just take... I'm going to use just Ukraine for an example. Russia has been able to fully annex uh, Ukraine due to NATO and just uh, U.S. support as a whole. Now, let's just say American supplies were cut off and it just has uh, U.K., Germany, maybe France. I'm not entirely sure which of Europe is even funding Ukraine, if it even is that much. I mean, both Israel, Ukraine, and soon to be Taiwan, uh, depending on the context, what Trump does as a whole. Most of the supplies, if not all of it, is coming from the United States. So let's just take right here. This is not the actual border, but this is just the provinces of Ukraine and then Russia. They just recently pushed into the Kursk uh, Oblast, if I'm correct. I don't know. I haven't really been staying on update. It's kind of looked like this for the past two years, pretty much. Since 2022, since the invasion, it's looked like this. But let's just say Trump comes to power, which he's, I mean, he's going to. 270 to win, not far away. I mean, just... Looking at this map, we, uh, Nevada and Arizona still haven't voted, but they're they're so far they're in for Trump. And then we got Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. How do you wait? Hold on. How do you pronounce this state again? I actually forgot. I forgot. I even forgot this state existed. I need, I need to learn my U.S. states again. I've been too focused on the 16 Soviet republics. Yes, sir, bro. Trust my process. Uh, Minnesota. and anyway, Alaska is actually leaning for Trump, which is interesting. And then Hawaii is for uh, Harris. So 214, 247, 61.4 million votes, 66.1 million votes. And it's so funny because uh, I don't know. Like, the right-wing infighting for U.S. elections is actually really funny. Last year, when Biden won, uh, uh, Trump support Republicans said the election was rigged. And just now, the election's not even over yet, and I'm on Reddit. I'm already seeing liberals saying the election was rigged. I, I mean, I don't understand. I, I don't get how people think. By who? The election is rigged by who? Whom? Russia? Maybe. Possibly. Ain't nobody else rigging nothing. Like, there's there's no riggers. There's no riggers. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. So, let's just say right here. Let's just say Trump wins, which is, I mean, looking at this, he's definitely going to win. 270. Uh, the time is currently 1020 for me, California. 
Ukraine gets no more funding and they just got NATO support. NATO is the United States. What is NATO without USA? Uh, just a funny little Euro European European Union 2.0. That that's what NATO is without uh, the United States. Pretty much, I, I like to call it that. I mean, I think it's pretty funny. So let's just say it cuts funding. Give it. Hear me out. I this could be wrong. I don't actually know because it, it's not like Russia. I mean, Russia is a second powerful military but they have they have all this land that they have to defend i mean they have to border they, they have to have military on their borders and they also have to make and considering russia is a second powerful military their economy however is not so good uh same with their it, it's just not good their military might be great but their economy is horrible use too much military force and you got issues with your economy so far. Yes, this war has funded Russia's economy, but all I'm, what I'm saying is they have to spread their military out throughout their borders and they have to try not use too much. And they're fighting the United States armory. I'd say Russia's done pretty good. I didn't I thought Russia was going to do shit. Um of course so liberals, I don't know if they just cope or they're just dumb. They think big country equals powerful. No, that's that's not how that works. Big country doesn't equal powerful. Russia's Russia's not powerful. It's powerful, but I guarantee you, if it were to use so much power, like imagine using so much power, you pass out. That's Russia right there. Uses too much military force, spends too much on military. It's the economy's cooked. All right, it's done. At least that's my thought on it. But let's just say, with all that in hand, all that in thought, Russia finally decides and. There's no more funding for Ukraine for from the United States. They just they pass through, use Belarus, they get inside, they're surrounding their balls right now. They got Kiev city surrounded. They're clapping everything, everything you could possibly think of. Clapped, clapped, clapped. Everything's getting clapped. Every single province. And then finally, they capture Kiev city. That's it right there. Without American funding, give it like not even four months. Make tops. I and I'm just saying this out of my ass. Like I, I don't even know for one hundred percent. But that could happen. Might happen. Uh we'll, or we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. And then this is pretty much Russia's territory. Oh, I mean, we can't really forget Georgia, too. We got the little occupied areas here. Like, I'm pretty sure it's uh, this one. And where is it? Is it is it is it this one? Or is it this one? I'm pretty sure it's this one. I don't know. Russia's territory just expanded. That's pretty much where we're at. Uh, and oh, in the United States. I, I mean, I'm not an accelerationist. Okay. Um, I do believe that there's too much political ing uh, ignorance in the United States right now for anyone, for even the proletariat to rise and seize the means of production next week. Like, I see a lot of Marxist, Leninists, socialists, and communists as a whole uh, say, oh, the revolution, it's, it's going to happen in a couple years. 2030 like no i i really don't think it's gonna happen not so soon there, there's too much political ignorance even for the working class like the working class thinks it, they're just not educated enough or aware enough you're gonna have to give it i'd say at the very least 2033 before the proletariat itself alone starts to have class consciousness and starts to wake up and say wait a second the Democrats aren't doing anything. The Republicans aren't doing anything. Hmm. Capitalism, capitalism isn't doing anything. Hmm. Well, what, should, what, should, what should we do? And then they're going to start seeking for an alternative. And that's pretty, that's pretty much what happens. It's inevitable because, I mean, there's only limited resources in the world. And they eventually are all going to be in the bank accounts of the billionaires. And it's inevitable. The real question is, 
when, not if it will happen, but when will it happen? I don't think it's 2030, and I guarantee it's not early 2040. Probably 2050. I think. That, I mean, for the working class, I mean, they're not even class conscious right now. They're, it's not happening next week. I, I'm not too sure why I see a lot of left-wingers think that. But for an, let me just continue what I was saying. If I was an accelerationist and I believed that it was happening next year or in the next coming decade or whatever that kind of leftist brain rot that is, um, I would vote Trump. And the reason why that is, is because Harris will objectively make America better. Now, hear me out. She is not for the American people, but she's going to do better than Trump. How? By being an imperialist. She's going to bomb Gaza. She's going to fund Ukraine. She's going to fund Taiwan. She's going to expand American neoliberal imperialism, which is something that Trump will not do because he's he doesn't have a stance. He doesn't have an ideology. He's rich, he's bored, and he wants to run for president. That that's that's Trump's stance. He just wants to run for president for the power, I guess. That and his buddies in the Kremlin. That's pretty much it. The Democratic Party will actually help the American Empire ex- expand. And that's exactly why when people come up to me and say, "Oh, Harry." Uh, Harris is the lesser evil. Lesser evil for whom? Americans? Well, of course. I mean, she's going to expand the American empire. It's going to become greater. It's going to become bigger. Russia's cooked. China's objectively cooked. Trump, however, is not going to do that. He's going to isolate the United States for personal reasons, I suppose. And possibly destroy the economy. So, again, if I were an accelerationist, I'd vote for Trump. So the United States would fail quicker. The the American empire, the imperial core, would collapse. I would love to see that, but that's not going to do anything. If anything, it might even make uh, liberals gain more power. Which is something... I don't want to happen, obviously, because that that might even lower their chances of seizing the means of production. But, I mean, I don't know. I am extremely curious. Because Harris is going to do what every United States president does. What every other United States president always does. Expand the American empire. That's what she does. That's what she's going to do. That's her plan. That's her ideology. Pretty much. Trump is the only president that I know of that wants to actually isolate the U.S. and not expand the empire. That's like, like, think as Harris as Adolf Hitler or, um, what's his name? Uh, Darth Vader. Think of her as Darth Vader. Now, imagine there's an election for the Empire in Star Wars. Uh, The Empire is huge. It's expanding. So you have have Darth Vader. I'm not a Star Wars fan. I haven't watched any of the movies, but I'm just going to... To my knowledge, you have Darth Vader, and you have, I don't know, another guy that uh, simply, he he wants to... He just doesn't want to expand the Empire. He wants to... uh, how How do you put this? Leave the rebels alone. He wants to leave the rebels alone. Vote me, vote me. I'm going to focus on the American people. Yeah, you'll probably focus on the American people, but uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Donald Trump, but I I think you're confused. (laughs) The American people rely on the American empire. The reason why we Americans are so privileged is because we bomb and exploit third world countries. And we prevent Russia from expanding its borders. That And that's exactly why I laugh when somebody says uh, Kumala Hairless is the lesser evil. 
Again, lesser evil for whom? The American people? Yes. Everybody else around the world? Everybody else affected by American imperialism? No, definitely not. Trump is actually objectively better for people who are, are affected by an American imperialism. Not really, though. I mean, we got bourgeois imperialists versus bourgeois imperialists. They're not different, necessarily. But Harris is the only one that has a plan to expand the American empire, which I'm completely against. Trump, he's just going to... I feel like he's just going with it. I don't think he has a stance. Like, at all. <laughs> that, and, and this is why there's been a rise of a lot of Republicans actually voting for Harris instead of Trump. And it's so funny because liberals are like, see, Trump is bad. Even Republicans are voting for Harris. No, that's 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 a bad thing. You you claim to not be the fash, but you're having the fashies vote for the non-fash. That that speaks great volume. That e immerse enlarging volume. I mean, I don't even know what there is to say right there. So Trump is definitely gonna win. I mean, I think it's it's guaranteed. It's been guaranteed since, I'd say, the assassination attempts. Like, it's just, it's been guaranteed. There's a possible chance that something happens and Kumala Hair Hairless wins. But if not, the Mr. Orange put the fries in the bag. Trumpet is going to win. And he's going to shit on the U.S. empire. That's that's pretty much what's going to happen. I mean, not fund Ukraine, isolate the U.S., not, not be a part of NATO. NATO is like the biggest tool for American imperialism and just the empire as a whole. And it's just, he, he's not going to like do that. <laughs> do that. <laughs> like that, that is... I don't know. I, I just, I can't, this, I can't think of it. Because the people who claim to be American patriots, and then they go and they vote for the guy who's going to isolate the U.S. Like, oh, yeah, you're an American patriot, all right? USA patriot. Definitely not an American empire patriot. That's for sure. Like, I mean, the, the empire is already collapsing. It's struggling. It's so similar to the end of Rome, uh, the Roman Empire. And and then we want to stop funding Ukraine, get out of NATO. Like, this is probably would be the most interesting time to live in right now. We're going to see the biggest, most powerful, most evil, in my opinion, or I guess by fact, actually, uh, depending how you define moral, um, most biggest... Did I say that already? Big? So big. Empire. In human history. Like, the day it collapses, we're going to look back and we're like, oh, yes. The United States. The core of the imperial core. An American empire. Ah. Yes. I, I know this. The. Could, could this be. Can this be? I mean, this. No, no. This can't be. This can't be. I don't know what to say, to be honest. Here we got it. Let me just do. Let me do communist states here. Uh, Marxist Leninist states. I'm not going to say communists because they're. They, these countries, the red countries here don't practice communism. They don't, they don't practice socialism e either. They, they practice state capitalism. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, here's the best way I can show. Oh wait, 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 hold on. I, I'm a, I'm not including some of the green ones here. There's definitely some right here, in uh, Africa. Maybe some right here. Oh, can't forget Belarus. I can do that, but we can't forget Australia, New Zealand here. That's a big. Uh, so let's, let's also do the uh, neo colony here. Um, island of trash apparently, according to the Republican Party, like. Puerto Rico is literally a 
colony of the United States and you're you're insulting your own colony. This I'm getting the vibes from Churchill calling the Indians uh quote unquote beastly people. Like and look what happened to the British Empire. It collapsed. Also wait till twenty forty. The UK is gonna dissolve into Wales, England, uh Scotland, and then Northern Ireland is gonna give back to well Ireland. <laughs> That's the day I I, I I jump with joy when I see the United Kingdom dissolve. I'm gonna I'm gonna like I'm gonna start hopping with like joy up and down. I'm gonna say yay! Oh wait, we can't forget Samsung Republic. I mean, just can't. Does Taiwan count? I think Taiwan counts. Let's let's count Taiwan. Okay, so minus the thousands of military bases all over the world, the blue is the American Empire for you. That is pretty much the American Empire. There you have it. That's it. It's big, right? That's pretty big. I'd say that's pretty big. And in the green, th this is just bricks. Uh, these are the countries against, 110% against the American Empire. Um, or no, 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 110%. Against it, they align. Okay, here, let me, sorry. Let me put it this way. The blue is the American Empire. Minus the thousands of military bases all over the world and overall bourgeois control. The green are the countries that align with the U.S. in a sense, at least in terms of direct ideology, but are against it. And the red are against it and don't align with the U.S. Is that Does that make sense? Red, red is left, blue is right, and green is like in the middle but leaning just a bit to the left, but is de factually right, but leans to the left because they oppose the right, but they're for the left in a sense, but they're right wing. Oh, wow, that's really complicated. I really wish I could just make a chart instead. Um, oh, right here, right here, perfect. Okay, right, 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 left. Left, left. Does that is that is that a better is that better? Right, 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 left, left, left. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Anyways, so this that's what Trump wants to do. He, he wants to he wants to let go of the American Empire. He wants to isolate the U.S. He wants to he wants it to not be a part. Like imagine. Imagine that. Imagine NATO. Imagine NATO without. Oh, wow. I mean, that's just weird. I mean, don't don't worry about these imperial countries over here. Just worry about these ones in the north. Look at that. Look at that without the U.S. That looks. Pretty interesting. If, if I was an accelerationist, I'd be crying with joy right now. Vote Trump. Vote Trump. I hate. I uh, I I completely oppose Donald Trump, but uh, vote him right now. He's gonna. He's going to kill the the American Empire. Vote him right now, please. Get him in office. Get him in there. Like if I was an accelerationist, but I'm I'm not. So I just don't care. I'm just. I'm getting that experience. I'm kind of just waiting it out. That's what. That's my thought. That's my thought. Just waiting it out. Uh, but accelerationists right now, they're crying with joy. They're like, yes, Trump is being voted. He's going to kill the American empire. Let's go. Like, I'm at, just imagine that. Here, we got, we got Adolf Vader. Adolf, um, Darth Vader right here. And then we got some guy who wants to, some orange who wants to, uh, dissolve. No, no, no. You know what this is? Th this is... Okay, so this is this is um this is Darth Vader. Okay? She's Darth Vader. And here's Gorbachev for an example. Here's Gorbachev but for America. That that's how I'm seeing it right now cuz that's what it is. That's literally what it is. They both have they they both support the same things too and they both have the same enemies in a sense. Um besides Besides Trump, he just likes rich people in general. So Russia, for an example, which is a capitalist country with a, uh, a 
bourgeois oligarchy. He's going to be for Russia. But since Darth Vader right here is I not xenophobic, but very ultra-nationalistic, um, is against Russia, pretty much. But that, that's how it is. We have Gorbachev right here, and we got Darth Vader right here. And instead of make America great again, supposedly American patriots and nationalists, like, I mean, wow, I, it, it doesn't even make any sense. We have literal, we have literal Nazis, fascists going for Trump. Like, it, I mean, it just goes to show how uneducated MAGA 2024 people are. Like, you're going for the guy who's going to dissolve the U.S. empire. He, he's going to make it weak. He's going to make it like a normal country, which I'm actually all for that. Instead of going for Darth Vader, who's going to continue to expand evil and American imperialism straight from the spawn of hell. That, like, it, it literally goes to show how uneducated fascists are. Like, you're, vo you're voting for the guy who's, who's going to destroy the U.S. empire. If he doesn't do it, I'm like, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, whatever. But if he does it, I'm going to be laughing my ass off. Like, if he, if he leaves NATO, oh, I'm going to be cracking up, bro. Like, you're, gonna, you're still going to support the imperial outposts, which is known as Israel. But, like, at Taiwan, I, I mean, maybe Taiwan. Are we going to send weapons to Taiwan, Mr. Orange? Are we, we're not sending weapons to Ukraine. How about NATO? What if Russia launches a major special military? I'm against the U.S. Empire. So that means I'm against these both equally. I hate both of these guys. Um, but if I were for the American Empire, I'd be voting Harris and a light speed. Light speed. I mean... It, it doesn't, it can't be that hard to just educate yourself on geopolitics and how and why, why the United States is so rich. You want to know why the U.S. is so rich? Because we exploit from Africa, Asia, South America. That's why the America is so rich. Because of imperialism. And Trump is, he's not going to end imperialism, but he's going to, he's going to like put it aside a bit. And since the, since the United States of Israel, <laughs> since the American, American empire is on the, not on the verge of collapse, but is collapsing, it's losing imperial control over the world. I think BRICS is a big example of that. Since it's losing imperial control over the world, you have to focus on the empire as a whole, but you're going to just put it aside. That's what Mr. Orange right here is going to do. He's going to put it aside while Harris, uh, Darth Vader over here is going to make it the main goal. I mean, you have to be, let's just say I was MAGA 2024. All right, make America great again. I mean, I guess, it, what defines America? Because if we're just talking about the United States, then, oh, okay, then yeah, I'd go for Trump. But if we're talking about the American empire, which objectively makes America, quote unquote, great in terms of riches, I'd be going for Harris. Um, but these fools, these fools are going to go with the orange. Instead of Darth Vader. Uh, this is funny though. This is funny. We have 270. It's 26 minutes away, right? Did I count that right? No. That's 50, 16 minutes. Why did I say 26? 44 plus 16. 50, 60. Yeah, why did I say 26? I can't count now. Because I'm, I'm going fast. I'm going sped. Because it blows my mind how American ultra-nationalists are going with the guy who's going to objectively and effectively and most definitely, possibly, uh, theoretically speaking, destroy the U.S. empire when it's on the verge of being opposed and hurt. Uh, so that's kind of funny. Overall... I'm laying back in my chair with popcorn. Uh, well, maybe not popcorn. I don't like popcorn, actually. Uh, 
But I'm just I'm just watching this shit show. Cause this is funny. If Trump I mean if, if Mr. Orange here doesn't even make America great, I'm actually <laughs> I'm gonna be curious on what people say. And then the evil liberals who are for Harris, the imperialists, they're gonna be like, You fools. You absolute buffoons. You voted for the guy that destroyed the US Empire. You you buffoons. You fools. And I'm going to be laughing in liberals' faces like, ha, ha, ha. Darth Vader didn't get voted into office. Ha, 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 ha. The U.S. Empire collapsed. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, that's pretty much. That, that's going to that's gonna be me. Give it like. Give it like two years. I'm actually really happy um, Trump is being voted. Because, well, I mean, again, the, the U.S. Empire. I want that shit. I want to see that shit collapse. Get the imperialists out of here. Death to the imperialists. Come on, man. Um, but I'm also, I'm extremely curious. And I'm, I'm going to wait patiently once he gets into office. Unless he doesn't. Somehow Harris wins. Um, somehow, maybe. But or not. Maybe not. But let's just say Trump wins, which, which is most likely going to be it. I'm really curious to see what happens with Ukraine. How fast is Russia going to annex Ukraine? Or are they going to annex Ukraine out as a whole? You know, last time I checked, Russia doesn't want to annex Ukraine necessarily. They just want to occupy it so it can be formally in a war so it can't join NATO. Russia did the same thing with Georgia. Russia invaded Georgia, occupied two zones or provinces simply to not allow Georgia to have fascists up into their... Actually, no, wait, Russia is also fascist. What am I saying? Then I have um, xenophobic fascists <laughs> on their doorstep. That's pretty much what that is. That's why Russia invaded Ukraine. Obviously, I, I'm not too sure why people think they want to annex it. But if NATO is not going to support Ukraine, and let's just say Russia does want to annex Ukraine, because I, I'm not, I don't have the mind of Putin. All right, let's just say Russia does want to annex Ukraine. I want to see how fast it goes, and I'm also curious if Trump does isolate the U.S. and only funds Israel and nothing else like Taiwan and Ukraine. I'm curious to see if when or if China will invade and retake the Taiwanese occupied island of the People's Republic of China. <laughs> um, I'm curious to see if that will happen. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's just say let's just say Trump isolates the U.S. as a whole and the U.S. supports nobody outside its borders. I'd actually vote for that. I would vote in. I would vote for Trump, light speed, if he guaranteed that. I'd be like, yes, sir. Please, please, DPRK, retake your southern territory. Please, <laughs> that's that's gonna be me right there. I I definitely go for that. And uh, I think I don't think so though, because Trump is still in a peer list, just like uh, um, Kumala Darth Vader Adolf Hairless. Ooh, Adolf H Harris. Adolf Harris. Yo, that's actually a good name. That's going to be your new name. Darth Vader and Adolf Har Harris. Adolf Harris. There we go. Let's go. W Mr. Orange and Darth Vader, the Adolf Harris. Har I keep saying hairless because <laughs> I, I just imagine uh, Kamala Harris as like bald. Like instead of like you got you got Kamala Har Harris. And if, if you got if she was bald, it would be Kamala Harris. Get it? Hair hairless? Oh wow, that shit was ass. Yeah, I'm gonna go now.